everybody. We did an episode on Garrett's discovery, and we think it's all water over the dam now because we know everything there is to know about it, but you had a lot of questions. Let's look into those. The gang discovery left us scratching our heads, and it looks like it left you guys scratching your heads too. I'm Lainey Law. And I'm attorney Andrew Myers. So while we were going through the Garrett discovery, we had a lot of questions. Now we have, I'm not going to say super insider information because you guys obviously know that this isn't something brand new, but we have reason to believe that the Garrett discovery is significant. Now we were just doing a little bit of deep dive and research and trying to connect the dots ourselves but let's see what questions you guys have so over here we have a comment from mk386 and this perfectly encompasses the theme of today's video which is how do we really know it was his account and yes i'm confused also well um, apparently, uh, one of the numbers, one of the accounts is uh, confirmed to actually be his, but a lot of them, you know, there is a question because once Mr. Kohlberger was arrested on December 30th of 2022, there were people that made up phony accounts and a lot of people wanted to, you know, a lot of sleuths, a lot of people are like sleuths and they're going to solve this. So they, you know, created bogus accounts and they created, uh, you know, accounts that tried to go in. So um, it, it is a, a valid question. Uh, there are some uh, valid confirmed um, sites that were his, but a lot of them, yeah, they were phony. So that's the answer to that question. And I want to expand on that a little bit more and say that with how we had like the pages and pages of just seemingly random accounts, we don't necessarily know how those are connected to him. As we saw on the first page, which appears very blurry, you have one person at the center of the web and you have all these millions of different branches. That's not to say that these are people that he was following or people that followed him. For all we know, it could have just been like looking at each other's page. It could have been not connected at all. It could have been a person from a person. So that's part of the reason why we're kind of digging in and trying to figure out what we're looking at. And I think even right now, we still don't fully understand what we were looking at, which is it perfectly goes into Lady Brighty uh, 8559, which is why present data if you don't know what the data represents. And well, here's the answer yeah. to that. It's something, it's something that's out there. It's something that was done by a company that we've now verified is a valid, legitimate company. It's something that people are looking at with respect to this case. There's so little real evidence that's out there other than the actual probable cause affidavit, which is only, what, 18 pages. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk. You can read the Daily Mail. You can read the Independent. And a lot of it, a lot of stuff has been created that there's no real verification for. This is something that uh, was done by a valid company. It was a snapshot. That's all it was. It's kind of a snapshot of social media connections. Uh, like Lady just said, it's, it's connections between people. I mean, I contact you, you contact somebody else, somebody else contacts somebody else. And in the, uh, in the heat of battle in a trial, for those of you who have um, watched trials and sat in a courtroom and watched actual evidence come uh, out. Sometimes it's like watching paint dry because it go on and on and on and on. But then something like this is brought in and, you know, oh, so you said that you had no connection ever with so-and-so. Well, what about this? So it's something that's out there and that's why uh, we did present it. And I totally agree with that. I think you said it perfectly. A lot of this channel, we will talk about, you know, what's happening in court and we do give legal updates and we do prevent, you know, facts and we do present, present evidence. But a big part of our channel is talking about all the different aspects and all the different speculations. And one of the things we love the most is when you guys have your theories in the comments, because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm not going to say that we know more than you guys are all just looking into this case, trying to figure out what we can and 
uh, we were actually, I don't know if, the, if I pulled that comment, but people were saying that it is fun to kind of go through this together and make connections together and see what's happening. All right. So did you want to read uh, Kathy's comment? Sure. Kathy Voyles, how would they have been approached a month after the event to do this for the defense when Koberger hadn't yet, oh, that's a good one. Well, how would they have been approached a month after the event to do this for the defense when Koberger hadn't yet been arrested? Well, it's a good question, but remember that um, they had actually uh, kind of had their eyes on Koberger within weeks after the um, crimes uh, in late November of 2022, two different Washington State University police officers had identified that um, Hyundai Elantra outside of um, Koberger's apartment and had um, seen uh, the actual operator's license, which showed a guy with bushy, these bushy eyebrows that we hear about. So, you know, I mean, they at that time uh, may have been looking for corroborative evidence because we all know that some of the connections that are in the probable cause affidavit are really kind of tenuous. So they were probably looking for something that's more solid than what they had. I mean, they had all these things that were in the newspapers that are not completely corroborated or verifiable about, you know, how he, you know, may have approached the girls. May he, maybe he saw them at the restaurant. Maybe he uh, contacted them. Uh, and so that I think is why it's possible that this was um, generated so soon. Mm -hmm. I think you said it beautifully. All right. Oop. Little technical difficulties. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Every day we get better and better. Uh, so you lose. I'm assuming that's how they meant to pronounce that. AI and robot make bots. And I think that's kind of referring to a lot of the junk accounts we saw. And I did want to address that because uh, like we had talked about a little bit during that episode on the Garrick Discovery, you look up a lot of these accounts and a lot of the names are nonsensical and a lot of them lead to nowhere and you can look them up on Twitter, look them up on Instagram and it just seems like a bunch of junk. And I think that's something that we also have to take into consideration. I think everybody watching this video who uses Instagram and social media can testify that most of the accounts that we'll see and interact with online are complete garbage accounts made to try to find and harvest our data. So I do, uh, I think that's what you lose was uh, trying to mm. get at and I, don't disagree with that yeah, statement. People can, people can make up any kind of a name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, did you want to read Sanjay or you want me to read Sanjay? Sanjay Varma, this information doesn't pass the common sense test. No person follows all those corporate and junk Instagram pages, but a bot or a fake account would to boost traffic. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what he's saying, but I mean... I don't know if I agree. Um, I mean, a bot, I agree with that part. A bot or a fake account would do that to boost mm -hmm. traffic. But I mean, yeah, there are there are people that have nothing better to do than sit around all day and do their social media, right? Uh huh. And I think, like, because he says, like, follows all those corporate and junk Instagram pages because we did see, like, a lot of big pages. And this kind of goes back to, like, how I said before, we don't know if this is following or that they follow him or. Maybe it's a like, or maybe it's just something as simple as a page view, because page views are stuff that can be tracked. So I agree, you know, with Sanjay, because when you look, when we look at the list, if you think of it as things that he's following it, it looks insane. But yeah. if you look at it at things that maybe were just in passing, maybe bot accounts that were liking uh, his things even, I mean, we don't see it as much on YouTube because you can't see who's liking it, but... God only knows on Instagram, you get a million bot accounts liking you and tagging you saying you've won a million dollars. So <laughs> Right. Plus, um, I know from my website and from working with some really good um, SEO engineers who really do know their stuff, um, you know, you get bots and you get um, a lot of junk and you get a lot of different people contacting you. So now, and interestingly, some of the bots are Russian. And I have nothing to do with anybody in Russia uh, and the whole Russian thing that happened during a previous presidency. And we're not getting into <laughs> politics. 
you know, it blew my mind that people actually took it seriously because there are bots that come out of, you know, corporates, uh, corporations and stuff in Russia. So now one of those bots contacts me. So now I'm listed as a contact of the bot. Now that bot goes on to contact thousands of other people. So it's easy to have a big flourishing diagram like we um, showed uh, in our thumbnail there. So it's not hard to have a lot of different corporate and junk Instagram contacts when there, you really have no connection with them. I had no connection with those Russian bots. Or if they contacted me and then they contacted people from California to Alaska to Maine to Florida, I have no connection with them. But it's going to show in this, you know, flourishing diagram that we can't read. So that's my answer to that one. I, you know, it is what it is. And I think um, outside of the presentation that we saw and that's out there that you can see, um, it's out there on the web. Outside of that, um, these connections can be manipulated. You can uh, do the equivalent of zooming in and zooming out and focusing on one part. Like, remember the, the thing that was up in the upper right-hand corner that you said looked mm -hmm. like a tadpole? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can go in on that and expand it and show it. But it's just that we have a we don't have that the luxury of the three D you know going, yeah we can't go in and out and zoom in and zoom out we it, it it's just kind of a static presentation I would suggest that it might blow everybody's mind uh, when trial comes if this is in fact used as an exhibit to see how this data can be manipulated at that point. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a joke and say you guys need to private all of your accounts so that way. If someone, you know, is on murder trial, you don't end up connected to them, but you really can't even prevent it. Because like we, talk, we have all these fake bots and who they are, like we talked about, it, like how many people are these fake bots contacting? There's, there's no safety. You're never safe on the Internet. And some of them are safe. Some of them are, are benign. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are, are certainly uh, malevolent. They get into your uh, and I'm certainly the last person that's an expert, but I do know enough to know that they can get into your computer and do damage and then report out cookie like, you know, anything that you've done or not done. Um, but there are also bots that are just benign. They just there are actually companies and it was proven on an, another website that I follow uh, that sometimes there these things are just sent out and they bounce back and there's really little or no purpose to it. But there's a ton of them out there. And we're all being contacted by these people. Um, it's kind of like gamma rays out there in the universe. Kind of, and I, I will say, like and like you said, some can be malevolent. I can't even speak malevolent. malevolent. And some can be benevolent. Right. Um, but there, you are totally right. There's so many bots out there just sticking their feelers out, not necessarily for good or bad purposes, but just to do it. Now, they are doing it. There are some that do it for bad reasons. And I'm going to use a personal uh experience on this i was watching a twitch streamer once and this could happen to youtuber streamers as well but a bot posted a link in his chat and he wanted to it is this person had gotten hacked previously so the, the foolishness is out of control but as a joke they wanted to click the link or they did click the link uh -uh. to show you like what's going on. And that was just asking for your password and stuff. And I'm like, don't do that. Right. Because even if you're just in engaging with these bots as a joke, once you click the link, they have your IP address. If it's right. not like a Facebook link. So be careful. Don't mess with bots. I'm, I'm susceptible to that too. So I get it. <laughs> did you do the, did you download the comment about how uh, one of them or a couple of them were, uh, it's known, it's well known, obvious porn sites. Oh, I did. <laughs> we're going to get to that. All right. One I'll, last. I'll hold off my comment on that. <laughs> I actually, I saved that one last <laughs> because it, it actually, it was funny because they kind of went along with something that I was thinking too. Um, so feminine energy 17 and this has me so confused i can't, still can't shake that he didn't follow the girls i feel like it's a trick of words also jay Embry stated that bill thompson said that you you the defendant didn't follow the witnesses 
He didn't say victims. Was it a Freudian slip? Well, that's a good observation. I had the same observation, and um, I, I do want to do a whole other episode on uh, what um, William Thompson said in that hearing of April 10th and what he didn't say, and did he really say that uh, there was no stalking, or was he taunting uh, the, the witness? Because he obviously didn't like the guy. There was obviously bad blood. You know, you stay angry. So, all right, that uh, putting that aside, and that, that's a really good point, feminine energy. Um, did he did he follow the girls or did he not follow the girls? What does following the girls mean? If he if he just went into a vape shop and they were buying their vapey things, and um, he said hi to them. And then they left. Is that following them? I mean, they were pretty girls. He's a young man. He thought, you know, maybe at least I'll try to say hi to him. Uh, and then they blew him off. Is that following them? I um, think that this is more <laughs> as opposed to following a person, which I agree with that. Like that, you can't say one way or another. I think the argument with this is following as in online and social media, which I feel like I've heard mixed things. I thought I've right. heard someone say that he was following two of the girls, but I also... And we like we talked about. There's so many fake accounts we don't know, but I I may I might be misspeaking. Don't quote me on this. But I thought I recalled someone saying that he was following the girls, but had followed the girls after. Uh oh, <laughs> no no. <laughs> so and that was one of the things where I was like thinking is just like well if it was after the fact and that's kind of self incriminating. But we don't know. I mean at the end of the day we don't have a at least not that I've seen or been able to find a Koberger account where we can say who he was interacting with, who was he engaging with. We are all equally lost and floundering. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, when we did this episode with Forensic Frenzy, I think we beat this into the ground. We, we beat the dead horse already, but... Um, <laughs> You know, uh, so what he um, clicked a picture on, was it Instagram? I forget which site. Maybe TikTok. TikTok. Was it TikTok that it he, TikTok he clicked on the picture and uh, he might even have clicked twice. And they didn't even, uh, they definitely didn't respond, but they may or may not have even seen it because it went into the equivalent of their spam filter. And so um, there's another word that Forensic had for it. I forget what it was, but he may well have, you know, clicked on their pictures and he may well have tried to say, Hey, how are you? And they ignored him. Is that a contact? Is that follow? Is that really following? I mean, in the, in the real sense of, you know, following somebody down the street and, you know, where are they going now? You know, it's, I think it's a nothing burger. I think with the social media and that's like a big part of what this whole Garrett discovery that we've been discussing is that with all these accounts on social media, a lot of it can be completely insignificant. I yeah. was looking on, um, like I get, <laughs> to this day, growing up, I had some friends in Connecticut. I, on my old social media accounts that I no longer use, holy guacamole, are there just so many random people from Connecticut that are following me and I'm following and I have never met in person and maybe we'll exchange likes and stuff. Social media is such just like a fleeting thing where somebody will comp say, oh, like, I like your idea, you're really cool or whatever, and you just follow each other. And just because you're following each other or following someone doesn't mean you agree with them, doesn't mean you're interested, no. doesn't even mean you know who they are. I, there's so many times where a post comes up, I'm like, who the hell is this person? Okay, we're following each other. I guess I'll leave it. It means so, nothing. Yeah. It really means nothing <clears throat> that mm -hmm. people are connected uh, in this way on social media. It can mean something if mm -hmm. there's more. If, if there's some other contact, if there's a conversation, if they know each other, if they go to the same school or work at the same place, but without more, just to have these little, you know, dots lining up is really meaningless. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is, I actually cropped off this comment, Reno Mount, even your name, I love you, you were sweet, I appreciate you. Uh, even your name is very long, so I apologize for cutting off half of your comment and I'm not going to necessarily read all of this uh one of the first things that they said which is the main reason i wanted to pull this is are you sure that was a twitch i did not see the twitch icon anywhere here the twitch icon is a little purple box with a little stick right. sticking out um has started out with the grub truck i mean i agree with that it could be but i don't think that this is related to the grub truck data although if it was that i don't i don't think it could be related to the grub truck my thought is the grub truck would have a lot of connections um that doesn't necessarily mean anything. 
Uh, multiple accounts. Yeah, I can deal with that in another. I have the, I have the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I have the answer from the source, and I can explain that. It's nothing nefarious. I mean, people thought, you know, oh, they were uh, dealing drugs and they had a separate account for drugs, or you know, maybe they were. Uh, uh, oh, I didn't want to go there, but what's that? There's a, there's a site where um, they pay girls to do things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, oh, that account, one of those counts. Uh, you know, whatever. No, it's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so confusing stuff. Oh, yeah, and I appreciate you guys taking break that down. I enjoy watching light bulbs go off, and uh, you have a lot of nice things to say. I apologize for not pulling out your full comment, but like you see, a lot of them are short and sweet. But I did want to incorporate this because I appreciate the time you took into that. Um, Greg Mertz, congratulations on 5,000 subscribers! No, thank you, uh, 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 viewers and commenters. Yeah, the uh, the um, the Garrett Discovery. Um, episode was somewhat controversial. People had some comments that I had to delete. <laughs> but that episode put us over the 5,000 subscriber line. So we'll do more stuff like that. That's con It's controversial. Some people said it was rubbish. Some people said it was this. Some people said, why, why did you even look at that if it didn't have any relevance? <laughs> You know, so, um, you know, I, you know, anything that has to do with this case is controversial. So, yeah, we'll keep doing it. Yes, we'll keep doing it because we are not um, subject to the gag order. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So really appreciate it. No, I like this one. Greg Mertz, good review podcast. I want to say something about the credit card account with the bank accounts. Yeah, you and I may have 10 accounts. But they're only 20 years old. For God's sake, you don't have that many accounts when you're 20. Again, I have the answer to that. We'll do it in another episode. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, I Andrew says he has the answer. We'll go about that in another episode. If you're, like, selling drugs, I think it would be really stupid to have a bank account. Like <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, Mr. I can just see going down to TD Bank and... Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Banker, yeah, I, I have fifty thousand dollars worth of cash here. Can we open it up an account in a John Smith drug dealing account? Oh, really? I have a lot of cash deposits to make and no ten ninety nine, sir. Right, right, yeah, no. I, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, my God. this one, how you were talking about people agree with us or disagree with us. Uh, delete M clean. The fact that the name says almost looks like delete makes me think that yeah. this is their spam account. Um. It's all yes. speculation, and this is how misinformed idiots spell. You're an idiot. <laughs> well, you account. know the document is out there. It is a it is a legitimate company. There are questions about it. We've tried to address as many questions as we could, and we're doing that now. Um, it is uh, a legitimate document. It is a legitimate company. Uh, I took a look into some of their contacts with law firms and attorneys and their legitimate law firms and attorneys. Uh, and so it is a legitimate slice just because we, at that point, were just grappling with, you know, how it was all put together and what the ramifications were towards this case. Um, you know, was it speculation? Uh, in a sense, it may have been speculation because like I said before, watching a trial, uh, for those of you who have actually gone to trials and not just, you know, read, you know, the crazy stuff in the newspaper, it can be like watching paint dry. But then all of a sudden, something that was brought in, you know, 14 exhibits ago is brought in and, you know, the light goes off. So, um we're no, we're not idiots. misinformed idiots. We're informed idiots. <laughs> we're informed idiots. So there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this we always talk about is just like nobody knows one way or the other. We're just here to discuss it. We like we like hanging out with you guys. We like spending our time. We like hearing what you guys have to say. Maybe you know, or maybe you think we're misinformed idiots, but you know, everybody's entitled to. You. This is I said. Uh, I don't know if it was in this comments video or previous comments video, I say, Andrew, you know, you got some tolerance. After practicing law for 30 years and dealing with people on the other side constantly <laughs> and knowing that no matter what you do, somebody's going to be angry at you. You know, it kind of rolls off your back. <laughs> All right. Now, and this, Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, this is our last comment of the day. Thank you, everyone. So this is from Open Mind Perspectives, who's also a YouTuber. Um, so, you know, check them out. Um, I don't know if I've seen any of their videos, but 
they actually it was funny because they had a similar thought of how i was thinking of my little tad pulled in the corner because it looked like they said how do you know it's not porn sites the sugar baby accounts trust me i'm so frustrated uh i don't even have credentials like you guys yet i know exactly how to read this thing 100 now well, so why didn't you enlighten us and you know <laughs> why didn't you enlighten us my only question because i think i think uh our guest the last time around forensic she helped us through the whole thing and showed us how to read this because there's what a dozen pages uh and it all does relate back to the graphic that looks kind of like a, a, a minuscule spider's web mm -hmm. uh, we had a reading of the thing in that episode uh, but if you feel that um, you could read this thing why didn't you let us know and also I guess you know open mind perspectives if you have to if you happen to be watching this I think I've seen your comments on some of our other videos too so thank you for uh, being engaged and commenting um, because one of the things I talked about in that episode was how in our, our little tadpole, and maybe, I don't know if you're referring to that, where I was thinking that it looked like OF, but it either had been inverted or like flipped over or that it wasn't that because it didn't, it was like a circle and it had a piece sticking out, but the traditional website that we know of has it facing the other way. So we, it's blurry. We can't see it. We can't say one way or the other. If you're talking about that thing that looks like an upside down Y and is really weird, I would love for you to comment on that if you know what that is, if that's what you're calling the uh, Sugar Baby accounts, because I don't know if OF would necessarily translate to what you're saying that. But if you're saying the other thing is that, please let us know, because I was trying to look into that. I still haven't found it. I don't know if Forensic has found it, but I tried looking up the sugaring websites and logos and I couldn't see. I, I didn't see anything that looked like that upside down Y. Uh, that Interesting. Being, yeah. That being said, though, <laughs> um, you guys had a lot of things to say. And it was kind of funny uh, seeing you guys being in a very similar boat to us. I mean, we obviously, we talk about it, we go through, but we can't say one way or another what the things are. And you guys, some of you were nice about not understanding. Some of you guys are like, why are you talking about this misinformed? <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, it's just at the end of the day, we're all just digging through the same similar documents. I'm not going to say the same um, because I don't know really how many videos we have out there of the Garrett discovery. I know we're not obviously the first, uh, but all of this is just looking in to see what we have at our disposal and trying to make sense of what we can and we're all just the public you know you know it was an interesting document and uh as i said uh earlier it's something that could come back and really you know help us all have some perspective uh and the only mystery really is you know they had said and i i don't know if i believe it they had said that it was uh, commissioned by um inside edition but they didn't pay for it you know yeah right and anybody wants to come to my office i'll sell you a, a deed to the golden gate bridge <laughs> you know so on that really? note i guess that's it for the comments this week that's it for the comments this week we really appreciate what you guys have to say i'm curious if you guys are going to have anything else to add on to this i mean you know, whether or not maybe this is your first time hearing about this, maybe you didn't see our original video. What do you think about this stuff? I am always really interested because it feels like anytime I have a thought, it feels like the comments managed to expand on it tenfold. So if you guys have anything else you wanted to add to this, please let us know in the comments down below. Okay. Have a good week. Be kind, be polite, be respectful, stay away from dead horses, <laughs> stay out of the tunnels. You have been watching About the Law, a production of the Law Offices of Andrew D. Myers in Methuen in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts and in Derry, just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire. Remember to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends and others. 
If you'd like to talk to me about an injury case, a car accident, a slip and fall, a serious bodily injury case, or some other case, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk to you. You can contact us through my website at attorney myers Com. We have a contact us block, or you can call on one of the telephone numbers we've given there, or you can email me at andrew at attorney-myers.com. The foregoing is offered for informational purposes only. It is not intended as and does not constitute legal advice. Laws vary widely from state to state. You should rely only on the advice given to you during a personal consultation by a local attorney thoroughly familiar with state laws and the area of practice in which your concern lies. This podcast must be and hereby is labeled advertisement in some jurisdictions. Is that that? Is that that? I don't know. Is it that? We don't know our commenters really, you know, they, 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 they really, you know, know how to tell us. You guys, yeah, all things considered, you guys kind of tear into us, but we still read it. We still read it, even if you want to take us down to the tunnels and beat us with a dead horse and call us misinformed idiots. <laughs> I'm, I'm an informed idiot. <laughs> we are informed idiots. Yeah, maybe Andrew. Andrew can be the informed idiot. I'll be the misinformed idiot. <laughs> As Curly would have said, I resemble that remark. <laughs> 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 <laughs>